Okay, hi, I'm AJ of Everything AJ's. Thanks for joining me on this video. And today what I'd like to show you is a little bit more detailed about my sun catcher beading process and how I have my basic components and then I'll have my other components that actually get mixed in and keep it as a one of, one of a kind design. So I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a close up version of that and what those components are and how I end up putting sometimes similar patterns but different colors and that also you know, complies with it being a one of a kind design. So uh, here's what I have is I use my basic beading design board. I've got the lines on here to indicate where my, some of my basic components are supposed to go and where I'm supposed to stop beading. So that line here, and I, I have it upside down to me. So when I face it this way, most people are beading their jewelry and they'll go around like this. For me, what I'm doing is this is my top, this is my middle, this is my bottom. So I'm beading this direction. So when I have it laying on the table in front of me, this is the center, this is the bottom, that's the top. So okay, so here's the close up of the board. Now I'm gonna put in my basic components because those will go in the same place each time I do my design. That never changes. And I usually don't do three because a lot of times I'm bumping things and I make a mess of it. So I'll just do two beaded design layouts on each side. So this here is my clasp component. This has a little um, loop right there so that I can actually hook this clasp onto it. And that's what's going to hang my charm off of it. Um, I have only one video out right now about my charming process and, and what my charms are. Oh, here's a good example. So if I was to use a love charm, then what I would do is have a couple of those loops, you know, the clasp loops put together, and then this would hang on to that, and I would put that on my beading design. So that's that po component right there. And then I do use um, this bell. It's a, a bell bead, I guess is what you'd call, or a flute bead. Um, I've seen it labeled as a couple of different things. You can kind of see that it's fluted on one side. So I have all of these other components too, where these are kind of, I call them a, like a charm bead with lack term of um, maybe what they're really called, but. In this one particularly, I've got these really fun shaped beads here and I wanna put that on two of these this time. So I'm gonna do one on each side. Actually, no, I'll just do, do them next to each other. And then I have to get some more of these, but so these are like a, a hummingbird charm and it's got the hole through it, so it's a charm bead. Um, so this charm bead, I actually will place right here in the middle. And so it looks like it's almost flying through here, and the way that the fishing line holds it, it gives it that extra three-dimensional look. It's really cool. You'll definitely be able to see by the time that I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna pick these two beads. I've got Kind of a squarish shape here really pretty sh shape and then i've got this one here so you could put it two different directions um, for me i'm going to do it this way so it's going to be the wide side is down and the narrow side up okay so i'll put these up for an example so that you can see what I'm starting with here. All right. Make sure we're within view there, which is perfect. So what I'll also do is pick usually a, a main bead here. This pattern down here will match. And then this pattern will not match this one, but this will match itself in some way as well. And all the colors will be combined and obviously match each other. So what I'm gonna do now is just pick out the different beads and finish up this design. Get this here. 
centered a little better. All right. So now I'm gonna just start picking out beads and randomly laying them out. I might change a few things around, but generally this is how I'll start. So I'll pick a couple of colors out, repeat a few of those same size beads through the design. I fancy a lot of purple, pink, um, <laughs> different, different combinations like that. So you'll see me mix a lot of those colors together and that's kind of more my fault because it's my preference. It's what I really enjoy seeing together um, for those designs. Okay, so this is what I've got laid out so far. I'm going to do a fun flower bead right here. And here. And then right in the center, so this will be my centerpiece for this section there. And then for this side, I think I'm actually going to do, these are little rose heart or rose charm beads. So I'm going to put those in right there. And here, so this table is a wobbler. I haven't quite figured out my beading station as best as I'd like it yet. You know what? I think I'm actually going to just do a centerpiece here as well. Simplify the bottom. Make this accented more importantly. Okay. And then again, repeat this part. So you can see where I've got a basic layout, but yet they're all gonna be a one-of-a-kind design, different colors, and keep to the intricacy of it itself. So now I've got these beads that are going to basically line up to that charm class bead, and the shape of it actually holds into this, so I actually pick very particular ones for that section. Based on the fact that, depending on what kind of charm I put on there, I don't want it to hang. Um, and kick itself off of that bead because it just doesn't look very good. So now I'll line up a bunch of those beads. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this mess right here real quick and I'll get into the next process of where I'll pull out my fishing line and um, I'll actually show you a couple of knot processes that I do as well. So just one moment. Okay, so I have my supplies ready for finishing up 
my sun catcher and I'm about to show you a little bit more about how I tie my knots. So first of all, I do use fishing line. Um, I use a 17 pound test. I just found that 17 pound test fishing line out in the garage. Uh, it was not being used, so I took it. It's mine. <laughs> Uh, so I've been using that. I just basically wanted to pick something that was strong enough that if a curtain or blinds or someone came along and hit the sun catcher, it would basically just come off of its hook or, um, you know, if it's on a suction cup, it would come off of the suction cup versus come apart in little beads. So I'm just trying to do everything I can to prevent the fact of little beads going everywhere if for some reason somebody hits it too hard. Um, okay, so here is my sun catcher. This is an Aurora Borealis 30 millimeter round crystal ball. I love these. These honestly, like in any light, it's not very bright right now in here. It's honestly, I could probably have it a little bit brighter for light quality, but um, these are gorgeous. I absolutely love these kinds. So I do use these for all of my sun catchers. They've become my favorite. So um, basically I've, I've picked those to be my primary style. And if I can get the fishing line through the hole, <laughs> Come on. All right, so I've got my first um, string through, and what I'm gonna do is do my basic double knot. So I, I loop it through twice and pull it tight. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is loop it three times. So I've got, this is the tip. Here I'm crisscrossed so that I can take this through one, two, three times. Okay. You can see the twisting right there. That's a result of me coming through three times. So now I'm going to pull on the side that I have not cut off of the main reel yet. And what I'm trying to do is get this to where it points up. And eventually what's going to happen is all of that pressure is going to pull down and it's going to make a slip knot loop and that's going to be stuck there. It's going to be one of the best kind of knot loops that you can have, especially for something just hanging off of the end. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there. This knot is absolutely perfect. What I like to do though, to top it off, and every fisherman, men, women do this, they'll use their teeth and they'll pull that other side just to get it a little bit tighter. I will take the lighter, slowly burn that end. I do hold it out. You want to make sure you hold that tip out because you don't want to burn the part that's tied. But I just want to get a little burn. It's a very invisible flame, so you do not want to let it just go to town. Keep control of it. But that little nub, I push with the metal part of the lighter, and that basically puts a stopper on the end of that, and it's never gonna come off. I can pull the hick out of it, and it's not gonna unreal. All right, so that's that part. Very important step, I think, too. If you're going to make sure that those sun catchers stay attached to something like a fishing line, I'm not using a metal line with a bunch of clasping and stuff like that. I'm doing simple knotting processes and an easy way to stay down on more material use as well. All right, so let me cut this off of the reel. So I'm going to be starting obviously this way up and so that I don't get confused, I'm going to twist this. So I'm gonna start with this one because I, I want you to see what I do here with this process and how uh, that looks once it's hanging on. So I make sure and put the open flute part downward and there is what covers my tip end and my knotting. So it's just a clean reveal of that sun catcher ball right on the tip of that. Okay, so I'll probably speed the process up here, but let's go ahead and do the rest. Okay, 
So here's where I've beaded up so far. There's my loop clasp bead right there, my charm clasp bead. And um, so now I'm at the process where I need to attach the hummingbird and my square. So first thing I have to do is go through the bottom of this, okay? And then I go through the hummingbird, the bottom of the hummingbird. And then I have a really tiny um, bead that I put in between the hummingbird and this square. Oh, don't look over that way. Right here. And voila. And now it's attached. Very cool effects when you can kind of combine two different charm beads and get that three-dimensionalism. Uh, and, and that way, any way that it faces, it's kind of really, it's got a uniqueness to it in the sense of it's spinning around and having a little bit of character to it, so to speak. Just a couple more beads here. And then I'll go ahead and show you how I end off my knotting as well, which is also important because the tighter that you can get this, the better that this here will stay into those two beads so that it doesn't tip out and look almost sloppy, so to speak. All right, so I bead my line through this. All right, so again, I do my first knot, which is a two time, swing it through. Okay, so I've swung it through tw twice. Now, if you're not very good at getting that knot very close, take the tip of this and go like that, and you can really get it super close there. And this will help you keep that line in the very first knot pretty darn tight. Okay, you see there's not very much slack there. So it keeps everything nice and tidy. All right, now we're gonna finish it off. Again, three times through to finish the knot. There's my three times. Keep my knot close together. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Sometimes I will go like this just to feed the line through the knot and get it as close as possible. And then I come in for the rest with my fingernails. Okay, there we have it. Now I'll cut this excess off. I feel like I had a little bit too much that first time because I don't like to have a lot of flame. I just want to burn it quickly. Okay, sorry about Put that brief in. cut off there. I have obviously lost some footage, unfortunately. So, um, but here I am on the very last one. Good thing I had checked to see what was going on. Uh, for some reason it shut off. I don't know. Um, I have obviously been using my phone to the max <laughs> to get so many videos and different projects recorded and I, it's just kind of a pain sometimes but it's also such a convenience to have everything at my fingertips and ready to post and edit and blah 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 so sorry about that anyways let's get this last one beaded up and hopefully I will get all the way through it Just for the heck of it, I'll show you this knot again. We do our basic loop through two times. Pull it down tight. Make sure that your loop is in between that so that you're not knotting around it. You want to actually knot into it. Get it the 
as close as possible with the pressure. And there we have it. So there's my first knot. Now I'm going to do my finish knot, which is looping through three times. There's one, two, three. So my finger lost track of the knot. It went underneath there. That's where these come in handy. Bring these two knots as close together as possible because you don't want to have one knot away from the other. It just kind of becomes pointless. Okay. Cut that off. Knot it out. There we have it. And there's the last one. Okay, so what I'll do is pull this little loop down and make a really tight curl so that that holds on to my ringlet. And that's what you would hang off of. So that's that finished end. in me showing you exactly how I do that and um, hopefully you'll enjoy the next video too.